Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today for a Friday Reads video. It's what I do every week so we can wrap up the week in reading. I have already wrapped up June and my Pride reading this week. I will link that video down below if you haven't seen it. That is going to be important because I finished four books this week, which is huge for me. Capitalizing on the success I had in my Friday Reads video last week where I did a lot more reading than usual, which really hammered in the fact that I read a lot more books in June than I have in a while. And the reason that is significant is because three of the four books I finished this week were already covered in that monthly reading wrap-up. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them here. I will mention them, maybe expand a little bit on some things that I talked about in that video, but we'll get to all of that when we do the Friday reads. And then I have one book that was my first read for July, and I'm really excited to talk to you about that, and I will talk a little bit about some of my reading plans for July. I want to keep them very loose and easy. Somebody commented on my reading wrap-up to say that they feel like once I freed myself from the pressure of what I wanted to read or like a TBR, I did really well, which is funny because I did have a pile of possibilities that I was working off of for the month of June. I think even just reframing it and not thinking of it as something strictly to be read and thinking of it as a pile of possibilities really took a lot of the pressure off for me and I think that helps. So I wanna to try to keep that mojo going into July, but again, I will talk a little bit more about that once we get to the Friday reads portion. There are a couple of things I want to talk about first. The first thing is that I am thinking I am going to take a bit of a long weekend for myself. I probably won't do a lot of reading this weekend. And part of the reason for that is the holiday. Obviously, we are going to have company for the first time in over a year and a half. And that is gonna take up a lot of time this weekend, but also my anniversary is on Monday. We got married on July 5th in 2013 because it allowed people to have a long weekend when we got married and now because of the 4th of July. A lot of people are taking Monday off, at least in the United States. So we're gonna be doing the same thing. And I want to have a little bit of time for me, time for my husband, time for my foster son and the dogs to relax a little bit and chill. I had a really successful month of reading and I think this weekend, I'm just gonna take a little bit of time for us and then try to get back into the groove. Part of me is a little nervous about that because I have a really good reading groove going and I, on the one hand, don't want to interrupt that, but on the other hand, I feel like I and we deserve this weekend. So I'm gonna take a little bit of reading time off. And also because of that, I don't know how possible it will be for me to get a video done early next week. The good news is I have been compiling a blooper reel, as I always do. I always am compiling clips that don't work for the actual video and putting them into a blooper reel. And the one for the first half of 2021 is ready to go. So I am going to schedule that for either Sunday or Monday, probably Monday. And that way there will be something coming down the pike, even if I don't get to post anything until later next week, because I fully anticipate that once I get back to work, things are gonna be slammed. I am also still working on my list of the most anticipated books for the second half of 2021 and I'm hoping that that will be the second video that I get posted next week and then I'll have a Friday Reads at the end and that will be three videos. That's the plan. Let's see how it all goes. I definitely have the blooper reel ready to go. Once I have edited this video and uploaded it, I will get that going and schedule it for either Sunday or Monday. Again, probably Monday. So you can look forward to those. A lot of people don't watch the blooper videos. I find them fun and I enjoy doing them. And that is part of where I feel like you have to find a balance between doing the kind of content that people will engage with and doing the stuff that you enjoy as a content creator. Am I a content creator? I guess so. I feel weird about that. Now I didn't talk about my worst reads of 2021 so far in my best of video that I just published yesterday as I'm filming this. I will link that video down below in the description box as well. So I'm going to cover those in a little bit. I do want to talk about one other thing that I watched this week. We watched the first episode of season three of Making It, which if you are not familiar, is a very friendly, wholesome, wonderful reality competition show hosted by Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman, where they invite 
makers, people who craft and do DIY projects. And of course, every week there is a faster craft and a master craft. And I really enjoy this show. And this new season really upped the ante in sort of wholesomeness. It's full of tears, but in the best possible way. So many nice, kind, genuine people. I honestly don't want to see any of them go home. It is on Hulu. If you have not watched it, you should get on that. I think the first two seasons are still available if you want to catch up, but I just love that show. And I definitely recommend it. It looks like this new season is going to be great. They've only released one episode so far, and I'm looking forward to that. In other things, the Top Chef finale aired last night as I'm filming this, and I actually get to watch it tonight, and I am really excited about that. It has been a great season of Top Chef, and I am very excited for the final three. And I can't wait to see who wins. <laughs> By the time you watch this, I will have seen it and I will know who wins. So feel free to leave comments about it if you would like, although please don't spoil it for other people. So maybe don't actually, now that I'm thinking about it. And then the only other thing I'll say about things I watched this week is that I watched When Harry Met Sally last night because I realized it was streaming and I wanted something to watch while I folded laundry. And I just love that movie. So that was a whole experience for me as well. It's been a good week basically. Now, before I get to my worst reads of 2021 so far, I want to do one of my questions that I'm going through to finish off the 3K Q&A, which was actually last summer and I never actually finished. So I'm burning through the last questions for that. And the one for this week is PJ Reads. Was American history well taught when you were in school? What do you learn later that you wish it had been taught? Do you read much history now? So let's go with the first part of that to start. Was American history well taught when you were in school? Yes, and also no, because I think I was taught history in a very specific way, and it was done well, but it omitted a lot. And I think that's gonna lead into the second part of the question, like what did you learn later that you wish had been taught? Well, I guess the first part of that is that I wish other parts of world history had been covered a lot more when I was in school. We had a bit of European history once I got to junior high and high school, mostly doing a broad sweep through European history, covering like the plague, only glancing on the Crusades, and then basically fast forwarding to World War II, uh, world, sorry, World War I, and then World War II, and that's it. So I wish we had gotten more world history and other areas. I didn't learn anything about South American history, didn't learn anything about African history at all. We never even really covered Asian history when I was in high school or in college. We only covered it in as much as we did learn what the Silk Road was and that it connected to Asia and that's it. And I remember in a geography class, we talked a little bit about Chinese agriculture and like terrace farming, which I thought was interesting and that's it. We didn't really learn anything about that. So. I wish there had been a much broader scope of history, but also the American history I learned is the very friendly version of it. And I wish we had been allowed to be a little more complicated. It wasn't until I got to community college and I took a class on American history in the 1800s, which of course almost entirely dealt with the Civil War that you really started to get into all of the complicated things about slavery in this country. And it was almost appalling. <laughs> it is appalling, actually. Not almost. It is appalling. And it's especially appalling because I hadn't learned about them. And if I hadn't taken that community college course, I probably never would have learned about them. I would have had to catch up now on my own. I think there is a great tendency, or at least there was when I was in school, to erase the more uncomfortable parts of American history and try to make them look good. I remember I learned about the Trail of Tears but maybe like one paragraph in an entire chapter on that section of United States history. It wasn't until I was an adult that I learned what actually happened in the Trail of Tears and how horrible it was. We barely covered anything to do with Native American history or anything like that, and I wish we had as well. So on the one hand, the teachers I had were great but the structure of what American history was defined as and what we were allowed to learn was very restrictive. And I wish it was much more broad, expansive, and honest as well. Do I read much history now? 
Yes and no. I used to never read history books or biographies or anything like that because I always found them a little bit boring. And sometimes, depending on the author, I still do. But I love reading history. I, I have found comfort in recent years in learning about history or reading history because in a weird way, I find comfort in the fact that we have always been a mess as a society. So many of the problems that we have now are things that people have been through before. Just a hundred years ago, in the wake of the Industrial Revolution, there was a lot of fear about people losing jobs and what technology was going to do. And we are really going through that again. The format and the structure of it is very different, but we, we have been here to some degree before, which I kind of find comforting. It doesn't make me feel good but at least it's always been awful, I guess. So I really do like history. One conversation I've had with my husband recently is that he listened to the audio of The Worst Hard Time by Timothy Egan. I had listened to that a couple of years ago. I really never learned about the Dust Bowl. It's horrible what happened. My husband had never really learned about it in school either. Like you hear that it's a thing that happened, but all of the things you learn about the Great Depression really concern the coasts, what's going on in California, what's going on in New York, and they mention the Dust Bowl, but you don't actually learn much about it at all. And maybe people read the Grapes of Wrath in school, but that is more about the migration to California and not really about what happened. I haven't read the Grapes of Wrath, so forgive me if I'm wrong, but he grew up in Kansas and had never really learned about the Dust Bowl. And now he feels like he missed out because he could have spoken to people who had been alive during the Dust Bowl and he never had that chance. So history is a really interesting topic and I could probably go on and on and on about that. And I won't because I have to get to the rest of this video, but I do love history. I love learning about it I, I, because I also feel like new things are constantly coming to light and there are different ways of looking at history. I'll leave it there, but that is a really good question PJ reads and I clearly enjoyed talking about it a fair amount. But let's move into my worst reads of 2021 so far. Part of why I was struggling with this is that it's been a really good reading year. It feels a little bit negative to pick books out because I don't have any real animosity toward these books. One of them I kind of did, but I'm getting over. It feels weird singling books out for that, but I'm going to do it because I think it is important to talk about the bad with the good and be honest about impressions of books that we read. I will say, I think the biggest nothing burger of 2021 so far, somebody commented recently about the phrase nothing burger, and I think I stole it from the podcast you're wrong about. I had heard it before, but it was brought back to my attention because of you're wrong about one of the hosts used it and it's just back in my lexicon right now. And it's a phrase I love. Anyway, the biggest nothing burger of 2021 so far is Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell, because that to me, even now, I read it for the Book Two Prize in April, May, something like that, and it's already fading from my memory. And if you like David Mitchell's work, if you're familiar with the David Mitchell literary universe that he's crafting, you may think differently about that. And that's fine. But for me, who is not part of that literary universe, it just amounted to not much for me. And that is what it is. When it comes to the actual worst, I really did not like Death in Her Hands by Otessa Moshfeg. I was already not an Otessa Moshfeg fan. I had to read that for the booktube prize. And I had a really bad feeling about it going in and boy, did that turn out to be true. I feel like Otessa Moshfeg can be very emotionally manipulative with her writing in a ways that it are designed to provoke you in negative ways. And that's fine. That can be a valuable way to spend your time. Sometimes you do need somebody to poke and prod your comfort zones. I just don't like the way she does it. I mean, all authors, to be fair, are emotionally manipulative to a degree because they are crafting a world that doesn't really exist. Even if they are basing it on real events, they want you, the reader to feel a specific way. I don't like the way Otessa Moshfeg does it. I think the way she does it is very cynical and negative, and I just don't like it. And the second I started Death in Her Hands, I knew exactly what she was going to do. And sure enough, she did it, and I hated it. I know there are a lot of people who have liked her work and have liked Death in Her Hands. 
I am not one of them. I will also talk about American Dirt. Now, I feel like I don't want to punch down because it feels like this book is an easy topic, but it's an easy topic for a reason. They made a lot of missteps promoting this book as much as they did, publicizing this book in the way that they did, and the author, Janine Cummins, made a lot of missteps, and then instead of admitting that she had made missteps, entrenched herself. And given all of that, and then reading the book, and seeing the ways in which it always goes for the lowest possible denominator, and the most dramatic situation, and the ways in which it sensationalizes its subject matter in a very lurid way, and also seems to pass judgment at the same time, is really uncomfortable. I was not a fan of that. And a lot of that also has to do with the fact that at the time I had picked up Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. Really enjoyed it. And I didn't finish it because I had to put it down to focus on the rest of my booktube reading and now I need to get back to it and finish it. But that book was such a more humane, honest, interesting way of telling the same story. And I would say, if you're interested in the subject matter, please check out Infinite Country and don't bother with American Dirt by Janine Cummins. And then the only one I actually have a copy of is Edinburgh by Alexander Chi. I finished this and kind of ranted about it in my last Friday Reads video. I've calmed down since then. Somebody commented on that video to say that in his book, How to Write an Autobiographical Novel, Alexander Chi talks about how that this is a very personal book for him and how because of his personal relationship to what he was writing, he struggled with the ending. And the ending is really where I have a problem with this book. So now I'm stuck in this place where I want to sympathize with him, but and I do sympathize with him. But at the same time, I think the decisions that he made on what to do in the last hundred pages of this book are kind of infuriating. And although they were made because of heartbreak and pain and stress and all that, it's worth noting. However, I still think that the ending of this book is maddening. So I'm stuck in that place about it. So I don't wanna to spend too much time talking about them because it's been a great reading year there are certainly ways in which somebody could read these books and enjoy them way more than I did. And that's fine. That's great. If you have read these books and love them, I am happy for you. Genuinely happy for you. I don't mean that in a sarcastic, nasty way. That is a good thing. We are all allowed to enjoy what we enjoy. I don't like these books. You might. We can all get along and that's good. So let's get to the actual Friday Reads portion of this video. I'm going to kind of zip through the, I say I'm going to zip through, let's see how much I actually talk, the three books that I did talk about in my June reading wrap-up, which I will again link down below. The first book that I finished was Camp by Ilse Rosen. I tore through this last weekend and finished it. It also appears in my best reads of 2021 so far, which again is also linked down below. I might be on an emotional high with this right now. I was looking at my list of the best books of 2021 so far, and I wonder over time when I've had a little more distance from this, if it will continue to rank as high as it did, or if I'm on this emotional high having just finished it. But I really think that this book did a lot of smart things. It is also very entertaining because it is a YA romantic comedy. Now, I haven't mentioned this previously, because to me, it's not a big deal, but I feel like I should mention it at some point, just in case it is a big deal to you, or if you are thinking of buying this for someone who is a younger reader. There is a lot of sex content in here. Sex jokes, sex talk. There are characters who lose their virginity in the book, and because the protagonists of this book are gay male teenagers, that is the type of sexual content that it is dealing with the most. So if you are thinking of getting this for a young reader, that might be something you would like to think about. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's honest to talk about sexuality is kind of freeing, and I wish there were books like that when I was a teenager, so I could have read and engaged with them and felt good about myself. But I realize that that is a topic and a subject matter that a lot of people are not as comfortable with when it comes to younger readers. So be warned about that. That's all I'm gonna say in addition to what I have already said about this book. The next one that I finished was something I was listening to on audio, but I do have a physical copy of it. It's Forced Out by Kevin Maxwell. And again, I've talked about this book a fair amount in my Friday reads from last week. And again, this was something that appeared 
in my best books of 2021 video and in my June wrap up. So I've talked about this book three different times and one of them I hadn't finished it yet, but everything I said then still stands and I still recommend this book. I think this one is likely to stay pretty high on my list of the best books of 2021, but we'll see as the year progresses. Heading into the last day of June, I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to fit anything else in the month, but over the weekend, I had gotten two different library books, one of which I finished and I'm gonna be talking about more at length in a moment, but the other one was a perfect fit for Pride Month and something I could fit in with only 24 hours left. The Secret to Superhuman Strength by Alison Bechtel, because it's a library book, it has that plastic covering on it, which makes it not great for the lighting here. I really love Fun Home by Alison Bechtel. I did not like Are You My Mother anywhere near as much. In fact, there are parts of that that I actively disliked. Basically, my, in a nutshell, complaint about that book is that it feels like she is analyzing things so hard that she's getting in her own way when it comes to any kind of actual realization. My classic example of that was that she complains in her relationship with her mother that her mother had been unable to breastfeed her and it's supposed to be symbolic of a relationship that was unfulfilling and the struggles that they would go on to have. However, she treats that like this big revelatory moment and yet there are a lot of people who are not breastfed and are totally fine. I was not breastfed and I'm doing okay. And I have a strained relationship with my mother, but it has nothing to do with that. And I don't think that is symbolic of anything. And I think that just ends up inadvertently, I don't think this was her intention, shaming women who don't or can't breastfeed their children. And the reason that is such a big deal is that she spends a lot of time on that revelation and she kind of glosses over other things in the book that I, as a reader, was like, wait, that seems important. Why are you just glossing over this? Like she offhandedly mentions at one point that at a certain age as a child, her mother kissed her goodnight and that was the last time they had any kind of physical contact for years. And it's like, wait a minute, tell me more about that. That seems like a big deal. She struggles with a lot of the same things in this book, but she gets by them a lot better. And I think this provides a lot more context for Are You My Mother? Because in this, she talks about how originally Are You My Mother? was supposed to be a book about relationships. At a certain point, she realized the relationship she most wanted to talk about was her relationship with her mother. And at the time, her mother was diagnosed with cancer and was given two, two and a half years to live. She ended up living longer, but of course she didn't know that at the time. So she wonders if she was able to really emotionally handle the writing of that book. And I actually question that as well. I think that is a good revelation that comes from this book. It's supposed to be about her relationship with and experience with exercise throughout her life. And it's actually about her own psyche in that very Alison Bechdel way. But this was a much more pleasant, engaging read, I thought, getting a little bit back to Fun Home. It is not as deep and meaningful and profound as Fun Home, but it is still a fun ride. The final book that I read this week was the other library book, Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri. This was one of my most anticipated books of 2021. Actually, so was The Secret to Superhuman Strength. And this is 157 pages. It is also told in a very non-linear structure. There isn't really a narrative. There isn't really a plot. So I was a little bit worried about the direction it was going to take when I picked it up, but I ended up really enjoying this a lot. I have I have always thought that Jhumpa Lahiri is a beautiful writer. One of the most interesting things about this is that she has recently become fascinated with Italy and the Italian language. She wrote this book in Italian and translated it into English herself. And it is a departure from her previous writing. It almost feels sort of like a Jenny Awful book, like whether it has that sort of structure, the chapters are short little bursts, all titled after locations, which ties back to the title of the book. I'll read a couple of the chapter names for you just so you can get a sense. On the sidewalk, on the street, in the office, at the trattoria, in spring, in the piazza, in the waiting room, in the bookstore, in my head, at the museum, on the couch, and so on. And it follows a woman as she goes about her life and it's really a deep dive into her psyche. And I think it ends up being really interesting. For the first 50 pages, I wasn't sure. I was kind of thinking, where is this going? 
And then ultimately I realized it doesn't quite matter where it's going. But the woman in the book is really dealing with a lot of the heavy questions about life. She's dealing with relationships, isolation, connection, mortality, health, decline, all of those things. And the chapters are short little bursts. Some of them are a single page. I think the longest one is maybe four or five pages. And it ends up being a really profound study of life and this woman. And I really liked it. I don't know that it will break into, say, my best books of 2021, but I really enjoyed this book. I think it's a departure from Jubal Lahiri's previous work in a very interesting way. And I found it fascinating and it's a very quick read. I managed to read it in 24 hours, which again is unusual for me, even for a book that's only 157 pages these days. So that is everything that I read this week. What are my plans? Like I said, I'm going to try to take a bit of a reading break this weekend. I had an audiobook lined up and after I finished Forced Out, I caught up on a bunch of podcasts and didn't, I haven't started another audiobook, but I finished Forced Out two or three days ago at this point. And I'm actually kind of enjoying that. And I have another audiobook lined up. I probably will start it on Tuesday and just see how that goes. I will revisit on Tuesday and figure out what I'm going to do in terms of an audiobook to listen to. I want to read Gone with the Wind this month. I had been thinking to myself that this is actually a good time to start it because I had all this great reading momentum going and why not carry that into Gone with the Wind? However, we are here now at this weekend where I'm going to take a long weekend to myself and not focus on reading too much. So I'm going to plan on picking this up Tuesday and we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll have completely lost momentum at that point and this will be a bad idea. Maybe it will work out great. I don't know, but that's the plan right now. We will see how it goes. And that is my reading week. If you have thoughts on anything I've talked about in this video, any of the books, any recommendations, anything you disagree with, please put it in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate you following along, taking the time to watch this video. If you comment, thank you for taking the time for that. And I will be back until next time. Happy reading.